Let me move Latin next to Dan. Is that English? I don't know. Okay. I love not being in it. Let me just check here on my notes. I'll make sure it's actually live. Is it live right now? Yeah, we are. Okay, it's working. <laughs> We're going. Hello, everybody. We are live. Hello. Um, yeah, so we're in Ottawa. This isn't our usual grounds. We are um, yeah, six hours away. We left yesterday morning, Friday morning at, uh, well, I think it was 5.30 in the morning. Got to Milton around 7, and then we departed Milton shortly after 7 and somehow made it all the way to Ottawa. Oh, yep, my mom's on. Hi. <laughs> hey, Hello, Mom. Rose. Uh, Rose. <laughs> Thanks for joining. Thanks for watching. Um, yeah, but <laughs> thank God my friends don't know. <laughs> yeah. oh, I know. She, she loves me, but she embarrasses me at all. <laughs> but uh, yeah, glad to see you, Hersey. Yeah, of course, in, in years. And how many years? Uh, two years since I saw you. Three years since we worked together. God, that was actually so long ago. Here, come a little closer to the mic. Get get in there. Yeah, nice, nice, this is nice uh, and comfortable. Oh, Brett's in there. Hey, yeah. Brett. How's everybody doing? Yeah, we're good. <laughs> yeah, so we're just having like a very casual kind of casual. Uh, casual podcast today no to, no real topic just catching up with a friend and just seeing you know, how things are going here and so we're in an airbnb right now uh they've got some lovely art we figured we wanted to share this art for everybody <laughs> to see um and yeah we've got tyler hiding on the side yeah so i wanted to see well how's life Ever since I left Stats Canada, it's probably been, it's changed a lot, but like not really at the same time, obviously, because like since then, I remember when I worked at Stats Canada, it was like a nine to five job. And then that was it. I mentally drained myself at five, go home, binge watch on whatever shows I could. Yeah. And then that was it. And now it's like, I finished school. So Stats Canada promoted binging. <laughs> well, at least it was just binging on movies and not on. It promoted this trying to find escapism. I can tell you that because I remember, like, I don't know how it was for you because I remember you were. I loved like, it. You loved it. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. Well, I, I think it's because I had a better view. I was on the eleventh floor and you were on the first floor. Yeah. So I mean, I had an elevator. I went upstairs and I was just looking at Park Gatineau. I was like, yeah, it doesn't matter what I'm doing in here. I could be juggling with snakes, but you know, having a great day still. I literally had four walls, and then that was it. Hey, at least you had four walls and a roof. That's uh, that's pretty good. I used no, to work. I used to be a landscaper. That was great. There was no walls, no roofs anywhere. <laughs> oh, I actually did construction too after Stat Canada, which is surprising. What kind of construction? It was like we were building a house. So I remember I, I was like unemployed. I came back from Somaliland and then I couldn't find a job, right? And then I got a text from one of my little brother's friends. Hey, can you replace me for a day? Wow. I was like, what? So he took his job. Yeah. <laughs> That's basically what happened after like a week. His boss was like, okay, so you do more work than him. So I'm just going to. You're, you're, you're really like killing the stereotype now. You came from Somaliland to some guy's <laughs> job. You're not looking. <laughs> No, oh, it's hilarious. That's that's good though. So, like, obviously they liked you though. Yeah, like they they liked that that I just did the work pretty much, and so they kept me on. I was there for um, like a couple of months, but I couldn't stay there for long because I didn't know how brutal construction was in the winter. So I just had to leave in December. Yeah. Well, you live in Ottawa. <laughs> yeah. It's cold here. Exactly. Usually, like at that time of year, you're supposed to just apparently go inside with like the largest bottle of vodka you you have, <laughs> hug it, and drink it until winter's over. <laughs> and, and then and I feel like winter's still not over, which is surprising. Yeah, usually people probably stock up with like a few bottles. <laughs> I still have my winter tires on. Just I'm just waiting for for like May or something. I have mine, but I'm just waiting because I'm lazy. I'm thinking this might be the weekend that I get them changed. Though. Yeah, probably, get, probably good to get on that. Yeah, get my dad to put it on the old farm hoist and uh, take those old dollies off and put on the shiny yeah. ones for the summer the old, the old new shoes on yeah <laughs> you know it's it's seriously putting away your boots for the winter like the car is a human in so many different ways it takes fuel the same way that i take sandwiches a car needs some gasoline <laughs> a car needs windshield wiper fluid i need my visine <laughs> when a car needs to be cleaned you go to a car wash when i need to get clean again in the shower it's yeah. just it's, seriously it's like the modern horse yeah Pretty it's much. a living creature. I need to take care of my car too because the last one I had, it was just a piece of garbage. 
Well, and, and was it garbage when you got it? Or did you make yeah, it? Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but it was cheap garbage. Yeah. And then I didn't, like, I had to put in as much money as uh, my brother paid for it, basically. And then it just died on us one day. And then I was like, you know what? You just like, took the plates off, tossed it in the canal, and that was it. Yeah, my brother just sold it for like <laughs> 200 bucks of like scrap. That's it. Wow. And uh, yeah, I'm surprised it even lasted that long, to be honest, because I was just waiting for it to die. Because like I went to like a couple mechanics and they said either you can you're gonna be spending a lot more than you want to. Yeah. Just find something new. Well, here's what's funny. So again, cars and humans, they're not the same at all. But it's funny to think that like it's the equivalent of like if you went to the doctors and you're like, Yeah, like in order to survive, you need this surgery. It's the same thing as like your car needs a replacement yeah. of the yeah. hip. It needs a, doesn't need a new hip, it needs a new engine. Engine. New transmission. Caristic engines. Thanks, Caleb. Very no problem. Expert on cars. <laughs> That's exactly what mine needed, and I was like, it's not really enough. Well, when do you think there's going to be a new group of, uh, not speciesism, but autoism, where it's like, you don't treat your car right. Like, you never got an oil change. That's like the equivalent of, like, not giving your, like, dog water. Like, like yeah, we're going to rise up for the cars before they rise up for us, you know? Give it a couple yeah. of weeks. Yeah, it's going to happen. <laughs> right? Self-driving cars are going to be self-aware cars. <laughs> They're going to know where hey, you man, live, you cars. Feelings, man. I'm out of here. <laughs> That's not going to be good for anybody. Um, <coughs> so I see you got a cough. <laughs> oh my god, no. well, yeah, it's brutal. It's been like this for a couple of days. You live in Ottawa, so I mean, <laughs> everyone has a permanent cough. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <You're> just <laughs> once winter's over, you might end up, you know, losing it, but until then, but it's like perfect. Time. It happens like twice a year, like clockwork, right after winter ends and then right when it starts. So yeah, I'm not surprised, but my mom hates it because I'm literally just like sick as a dog all the time well you know like it takes like generations and generations to like get used to like the change in weather and humans because we traveled faster than any of our generation before and our genes haven't had a lot of time to adapt yeah. it's crazy like let's say let's say if i was like my grandparents were born in like the equator and then they moved like way up to the arctic or equivalent canada like something like that yeah just like it's funny to think that like that was never possible before like yeah. that would take you like I don't know, two generations, three, four generations, like before they even had horses, to be able to walk that far and conquer that far without getting killed by saber-toothed tigers and stuff. That's exactly how my parents did it. Or I'm from the equator of Somalia. Yeah. So yeah, like, that's what I'm saying. Literally, I'm not surprised like, I get sick. Like yeah, like if the cold's all you got, you're fine. <laughs> I figured it's like I lost my leg. <laughs> it was and it's cold. gonna last like what, two weeks or something? Yeah. Or longer if I don't if I stop drinking this. Yeah. I don't have a choice. Is that whiskey in there? <laughs> I, I don't even know what it is. My mom just she just makes something and she's like drink it and I just say, okay. As a kid, you could not even force me to drink something like this. Some healthy concoction. Yeah, yeah. just something. Yeah. I get shit on at work a lot because I just bring like random smoothies. Not like, literally though. <laughs> yeah, I figured okay. <laughs> Yeah, I don't because I don't know where you work with these days. Oh. It's a lot of different ways to uh you know to get into the you know Yeah, only talk about positive things with uh with my job. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, it's, you never know if uh, you know what's it called, big not big daddy, big brother's watching. Big brother. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, I used to binge watch that show so every oh, summer. Yeah, no, I never did. No. No, I just, I don't know. It's a, it's a weird concept. Like it's just because it's so, you know, fake, so planned. I don't. Like, I've never yeah. gotten into like Jersey Shore, even Survivor. I'm like, yeah, I know it's like so staged. So I'm actually pretty hypocritical because like literally that was. I only started watching it just because. I like I was in Toronto and one of my uh, family members watched it. I'm like, oh, I'll just finish the season, but like you'll never catch me watching like Survivor or any of those other reality shows. But because of I watched it as a kid, I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna continue. Yeah, no, but with me, it's like you'll never catch me watching those. You'll only I catch know. me outside. How about that? <laughs> well, and you're telling you right now that girl Trent, I used to laugh at her, and now I I can only be like. Damn, I don't know how you did it. Yeah, well, she did it. <laughs> I know. Right? Um, she got Doctor Phil to like just quit his job, pretty much. No, he's still he's still filling it up. <laughs> he's still doing it. Yeah, he's still filling up that gas tank with that Doctor Phil. No, but the thing is, she it's didn't Dr. even get Phil viral virus. until like later. On. I don't know how long. She was probably viral before she was on the internet, but now that she's yeah. on the internet, <laughs> she's uh, yeah, she's everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I know. <clears throat> well, what do you even? What did you even do since you left the? Left Ottawa. Uh, I've done a lot of random stuff. So, okay. The timeline is 
I met you January, no, probably February 2016. We had February? That, yeah, because we had that class together, that like computer course. That's how I met you. Yeah, we were taking that one course. You were in a whole other department, a whole like you were in another building at StatsCan, like same campus. Yeah. And um, so we went to like that computer course learning about what was it? Was it a software based one? Or I think it was like about just like data was, protection or something. It was just it was it had to do with training, like something that we had to use, like for a job or something. I don't know. Yeah. It was like what, three days? It was, yeah, two or three days. I remember uh, some other people, we won't mention their names, <laughs> got in uh, trouble for like just not even paying attention the whole time. Just doing some silly stuff. When I caught him sleeping, I was. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, we won't mention his name, but yeah, one of our uh, one of our friends who used to work at StatsCan <coughs> got caught like asleep at his desk. Like he had like a pillow he brought home with him or brought from home to work, put it on like the one part of the desk, had his foot up on the other. And the manager came in and was like trying to wake him up, had to like push him to wake him up. Another time he pulled a George Costanza and he was sleeping under his desk. No. And then the cleaning lady came into the little cubicle to like just take the garbage out of the little it's like personal garbage cans. And she looks under, he must have woke up and he's like, oh crap. <laughs> they look each other in the eyes, she screams, and then he starts screaming back. What? Her. Yeah, yeah, this is another time. I've never even heard that story. Oh man, it was a. Uh, yeah, I don't know. That was just so funny. Like, I, I would never, I mean, you know, I get tired of work sometimes, but like, I don't think I could ever do that, especially because like where, where my cubicle was, like, it was very open. It was right next to like two hallways right next to the, it was the assistant director. So it's like, yeah, I should probably just come to work well rested. Just sleep at your lunch. Coffee is that's amazing. What I, that's what I do. Coffee on my goes job. a long way at keeping the energized too. Literally, no one's going to bother you for that hour that you have off. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, no, I'm, yeah. I'm li- like at my job. Like whenever I'm like exhausted on like three or four hours of sleep, just, I'll just go to like the kitchen and then just like lay on the couch and just sleep there. Yeah, just anywhere. Like, yeah, basically. But as long as I'm doing it on my break, like no one's gonna, no one's gonna say anything, right? Yeah. No, that is awesome. And like she's surprised. Did he have like two jobs or something? No, that was okay. Well, he was doing. You know, I'm totally like uh, naive to like the whole process of like um, he was like fasting at night. For his religion oh that was during ramadan yeah i think so i think that was during that so like you know he was just exhausted during the day wasn't eating during the day so he just ended up like just dozing off yeah, like, yeah yeah because i had to go through the same thing i know it's like it's like in i think 18 days or something like that for the next one but i remember i was fasting too and like he's up at like before sunrise just trying to like eat as much as he can yeah but like you still make up for it like me, I still make up the sleep somehow, some way. Yeah. Like if anything, the fact I'm more awake during the day than at night because I'm not really eating like I'm hungry. So like I'm not not like uh, wanting to sleep that much. At all. I don't know. It's for me and him. It was like completely. Yeah. I feel like maybe you were more different. seasoned. You're just tougher. And that's it. No. <laughs> you, you know, it's so funny. One of my friends, like I remember I couldn't, I would never work out. During Ramadan, and for him, it was something that was a routine. He would go out for runs. Yeah, and, and you're like, like no. Go I'm like, nah. Well, you know, but that's probably a good thing because it makes you really like in that state of like survival. Like, you know, humans, we were like hunters. Like, we didn't just go buy our food from the grocery store. We had to go kill animals, and you know, so there would be times where like when you went hunting. You didn't take as much food with you, or you would take the exactly. food. Exactly, it wouldn't be enough to like cover the amount you're gonna expend to catch the food. Yeah, and it's literally like it was a business venture. Instead of spending money, you're spending like the amount of food and energy it's gonna take your calories to like get this thing. But it's like I can put in like a two thousand calorie investment to me to run after this bull. But mm-hmm. if I kill it, that and take it home, that's like enough food to last me maybe like ten days. So like it's yeah. like that's a good business venture to invest in. And that's what you had to think of. Like, it's not kind of weird thing. We don't think of it, our food like that anymore. It's like, we don't think of our energy from our food as like a, um, a like, like a, it, we don't put into a function anymore. Cause like, we just have unlimited supply of like that. Exactly. Back then when those constraints were there, we were all like little energy economists. Like, is this worth it? Should I just rest and wait until like some other animal comes by or just go into farming and make rice all the time <laughs> it's actually crazy how you think about it because yeah it's all about like accessibility like right now i can just go into that fridge if i need something to eat and that's well, not it. that I, fridge that's our yeah. fridge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah those are our cookies <laughs> no, cookies you, in a you, fridge. no whatever you want you got to keep them cold <laughs> um yeah what else is i gonna say i mean i guess i think of everything like economics so, like i take that and oh yeah because you studied it out for too long for five years but no, I would study more of it, but don't you find that? Aren't you like, yeah, I could see how a butterfly reminds me of like 
debits and credits in the accounting ledger. Like that was your all the time. Was yeah. you're an accountant? Oh, I did accounting up until oh yeah, because I was still in accounting when uh, when About I two years ago I think yeah, yeah. I yeah. left with six courses less. So I didn't Mac, just finish it. Come no, on. the thing is I graduated, okay. so I have the degree. Uh-huh. But the thing is I don't have the concentration attached to it. So on my diploma, it would just show like, uh, like a com- commerce degree or whatnot. You, you, so, you're pretty good at concentrating, though. I mean, like, we're, we've had a we've had a conversation now for 15 minutes, and you're still like, you know, you're still looking at me, <laughs> not looking at what these weirdos are doing over here. Because it all depends on what the content is. I'm telling you. Yeah. You should have seen like me and my friends. We would just vent each other in the library about like, like why are we here kind of thing. <coughs> yeah, it's gonna happen a couple times. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> literally, it was brutal. And like, I told to myself, "Hey, is this something that you even want to do?" Yeah, they like, just kept after you graduate. And then once I said no, like it was the best semester that I had. Honestly, I was actually learning stuff that I wanted to do. Yeah. and then I would just simply enjoy my time outside of class instead of like just like screaming like not screaming you know yeah like, and then, like, if you so six credits that's like you that would probably be like a year of your time because you obviously still want to like keep working and like yeah so you, it's hard to be a full-time student after you start working yeah exactly like i don't plan so like since i graduated and like had like a bunch of different odd jobs and stuff i don't plan on doing two at the same time i know friends that have done that like they would do full-time school and full-time work yeah but, that's like, insane like it I've done things close to that. Like I remember in third year, it was first term. It was before, right? It was the term before I went to Stats Can. I was working full time, so I was doing like forty hours a week at Fossil, like just selling watches and wallets and all that fun stuff. What you were a sales rep? Yeah, yeah. I was like a key holder, so I was like a supervisor at Fossil. So sold them watches and helped people sell them watches and just locked up at night and that kind of fun stuff. Opened in the morning. I had a key. I was literally the holder Ooh. of key. The only key. But, like, it's, like, whatever. Like, every you still need to have the password. You still have to, like, you know, turn it. Like, it's just, like, the security there is crazy. And, like, is I don't know. To have the key was kind of cool. But, like, I was just more paranoid I was going to lose it. Really? <laughs> so it was, like, yeah, responsibility. But it's, like, oh, man. Like, this isn't fun. It's not, like, the power's not worth it. Now, like, no, I was just always worried, like, oh, if I lose my car key, it's, like, whatever. That's on me. If I lose the store key, it's, like, crap. Now, like, we're probably going to get robbed. <laughs> like, now if there's a robbery, they're going to say it's because I was, like, negligent and just left it wherever. You there for how long? Uh, a year and a half. So I got the job there. It was right after first year. It was, uh, I think it was June. Yeah, it was right after my 19th birthday. So that was, like, June of 2014. And they, they gave that responsibility to a teenager? Well, I started out as a salesman, like, just an associate. And then I just worked my way up to... Um, they had me like as the watch trainer kind of guy. Like I was, they call it specialist, but you're really not that special. <laughs> like you know, it's, like just, it's just a name that they just slap on. I knew how to change batteries on a watch and change the straps and stuff. So I was like the specialist, doesn't it? I was basically like the mechanic. Do you have a fossil watch? <laughs> yeah, actually I'm wearing one right now. It's uh, it's the automatic one. Powered completely just by the movement of you, your you, wrist. You, you took it on your way out, huh? <laughs> yeah, I just grabbed it off my <laughs> No, I bought this one for my dad, and I took it back because he never wore it. Really? <laughs> yeah. Well, I find, like, my dad gets a lot of presents he never uses, so I slowly just start using them. And After a while, if he just doesn't notice, I just keep wearing them, and at least they get enjoyed by, by someone that he loves. <laughs> Why doesn't he just ask for stuff that he actually wants? Well, it's because he doesn't really ask for a lot, and it's like, you never want to get him something that's, like, just too, like, practical, useful. Or, like, I'm not going to buy him, like, hey, here's your favorite, like, raising or uh, shaving cream like oh, here's yeah, a yeah. gillette like thanks son like here's a bag of green tea because you always drink your green tea at night <laughs> that's exactly what one of my friends did i remember he got uh he got married this year and then you know so there's for i've been to a couple weddings and there's always different things that they ask like first wedding that i went to for my friend they asked for unboxed gifts and like what that means is just give me cash oh. and then the the guy this year he said oh you had a list a checklist of things that he needed of everyday items for his new condo and then he just got everyone to just buy it and can you buy me some butter <laughs> yeah literally he's like can you buy me like these cloths from ikea we need like this mug like these sort of things and uh like it worked for him right but then i don't know your dad is like you just won't ask for stuff huh yeah or like there's the things like imagine he would enjoy probably be like a new mustang or something it's like yeah i can't get him that yet yeah <laughs> like i don't know eventually but 
It's funny, my sister gets him a lot of stuff. Is that your sister calling you? No, probably, probably Bell, some other company. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably Justin Trudeau saying that, Dan, we need your help. <laughs> oh, no, no, the election's what? In... Uh, in October. It's October or November. Did you know that there's an uh, election in Prince Edward Island on Tuesday? And that the Green Party is leading in the polls? Stop. Yeah, dead serious. Okay. okay. Yeah. Show me, Jamie. <laughs> Green Party of PEI. <coughs> Oops, poll. I almost put PI. The nice thing about Prince Edward Island is that the abbreviation PEI looks like PI. <laughs> I'm actually so glad that they're not like bombarding my TV with election news yet. Not yet, but they will. So just turn off the TV, <coughs> just pull up YouTube, and just wa- keep watching what you've been watching. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Green Party leader Bevan Baker is still favored for premiere. Wow. So more good news in a poll this morning. 40%. Holy cow. So that's even more. So, okay, in Prince Edward Island, it says that 40% of people that they've called said that they're going to vote for the Green Party. 29% conservative, 26% liberals. And, like, the thing is, in the last week is when everyone really slants and tilts to, like, their final decision. I know. Like, it's just basically what they say is that, like, the – for every day closer you get to the election, if you continue just doing that same survey of like random people across the entire electorate, you'll literally see like a line that points, it'll either slope right up to whoever the person is that wins or right down for a lot of times, but not like everyone still has like their errors. There's like you know, right. a huge margin of errors. And the thing is when it's like usually like a decision, like a referendum or yes or no, or let's say the US election where it's literally only just like this person or that person, that seems to be when there's a lot more like room for error, where it just could be a simple mistake of just like like a scandal. Yeah, <laughs> or if the Russians come in, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I love the Russians. I love when they come into my like elections because it shows they care. You know, <laughs> the thing is like they know I don't care if it's Putin or some other potato that runs Russia because I know it's. Just, it's going to be the same kind of ruling party, the same way it's been for a long time. I mean, I hope that there could be progress and that, you know, things. Okay, I guess I do care about Russia. I really do. <laughs> I, hope, I hope that they have, like, the best. As I'm ranting about it. Yeah, the best president and prime minister and grand poobah ever. Um, it's not going to happen. <laughs> you're, you're, just, you're still into politics, huh? Oh, so into politics. Yeah, no, I, I just, it's it's very interesting. But, like, it in like kind of a cool way at the same time it's crazy to see like that's what like just it baffles me too i guess it's like i get, I don't even have the words for it sometimes yeah because i remember when i first got into politics was my friend he was from uh, kingston and he was running for he was running for a position oh, was was it trying to get the wording or provincial no, or was no. it city it was within the city yeah was it like it was city politics or... no it wasn't a school board it was counselor a, yeah okay it was a counselor for like his uh his ward is that the term? The region so, or riding? So, yeah, yeah. Like how to, his riding in the city would be called just like a ward, and they usually just cut it by based on like a little geography. And they try to have it so that like they draw the lines so that each person represents about the same amount of people. So yeah. for simplicity's sake, if you had a hundred thousand people, you have ten counselors, they would try to like draw a geographic lines to group ten identical populations. Yeah. And like they have ways of doing that. Like so they would that's why census data is amazing to find yeah. out how many people on average like, live in each spot and like, to have like the, that information available. It's really useful when it comes to like picking for any kind of election. Like they have to do that too with um, federal writings. And what's, yeah. what's funny is so you can actually take like the total population of, of a town and then see what the, like what the population is of each riding. Like they, they actually like um, aggregate that data together too. So you can actually yeah. see how, um, I thought that was a dog. <laughs> You can see how, like, in certain places, they have better democracy in the sense that, like, maybe in none of it, it would be, like, 10,000 people, but they have one representative, which is, like, a yeah, lot, yeah. compared to, like, in Toronto, where it's super dense, it could be, like, a million people for one person. You know, not, not like that, but you know what I mean. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. The numbers aren't, like, consistent across the board. But literally, he was there, so I had to go down to Kingston, and he used to help me just with, like, like, promotional videos for him and whatnot. Yeah. And then after the election, like, unfortunately, he lost. But then that was it. He moved on to like the next thing. Like oh, for him, he wasn't into politics anymore. No, he was. But then for him, he's the type of guy where he he sees an opportunity because the person, the council that was uh, had that position, had uh, resigned at that time, so they needed a replacement for a short period of time. I think he would only be a councillor for about a year and a half, 
So he saw that as an opportunity. If he didn't win it, he would move on to the next day. So it wasn't something that he was going to stick with. Yeah. And then right after that, he just like, he just like traveled. And then that was it. And now he's doing his next venture. Like every time I see him, he's always working on something different, whether it be get, get creating his own suit line or whatnot. Wow. Or, yeah. Yeah. Like just he, always keep him busy. He has to. Yeah. yeah that's, that's, everywhere. That can be a good mentality to have. I would just get worried about like people that just like depend on that so much. And like they base like their like the thing is you can't really base your emotion or your mood off of like your company or like, yeah and i feel like you see too many people that just get like i mean I don't know, it's hard not to say that like how like to disconnect from that because like we're human and of course you care a lot about like your investments and like what you spend your time on you want to make sure that it you know comes yeah. to bear fruit <laughs> but that's something that's something that you're actually sticking with right even though because i i don't want to ask the same questions that everyone else does because yeah. I feel like everyone has Let, always, on us. <laughs> everyone has always asked about like, Oh, what's your next steps in terms of, uh, to, because you were, well, my next steps is I'm going to go up the stairs. Um, <laughs> <laughs> otherwise I can't get out from the basement. <laughs> but like, that's something that uh, you're going to continue on. Yeah, we'll see. I've decided like I'm taking this year kind of just like as a complete breather from it. Like I've really, the funny thing is, I'm really tr- like I'm, I've been keeping up and like listening to everything that's been going on in town. I've been reading up about like every council meeting that's passed and just you know really so speaking with people and then, you know that's the thing too. Anytime people see me, they always want to know what my stance is on this, that, or the other, like any issue in town. And I love I love that like I've become kind of like a, a I don't know like a fountain of knowledge or like at least like a. Not, not even that, but like that, like a baseline thought of like people are like still curious about like, well, what's this kind of a person's angle on this issue or that issue? Like, I don't even know if I represent like, I mean, I don't think anyone represents like all of like a certain area or all of their ward or all of their riding or anything like that. But I guess like it's always good if you can have like or be like a leader in like that, those thoughts, like to kind of start like a conversation, if you will. Yeah. But now that you're actually like, like sort of like a public figure in your area do you have to keep everything pc or do you have to worry about like where like what you're doing in a particular area like do you have to rethink oh i gotta make sure when i go to ottawa i can't do this this and that no not really like the thing is like i'm just kind of still just uh, making decisions on things based on like what i think what i really believe in yeah and that's pretty much it like i don't try to like filter or think like well is this going to be something that people are going to support i think like well what's the be- what's the safest thing for everyone what's going to give us all the best outcome just from like uh, it's from the amount of information i have i'm going to just make my decision off of this you know and then so then how do you even get into it like i'm just curious well you know what like i was always really interested in federal politics and even provincial politics and i guess part of it too was like i just thought wow like you know that i really need to get more involved in my town and like i just looked around and like I started to get really into all the issues and like I was keeping up like and also we were getting a lot more information in town like there was a lot more um people like really coming up and like just spreading like uh here's a story of something that happened here in town that like everyone yeah. learned about this and here's something that happened over here like what's your thoughts on this and like it was really like starting to be like a really good digital community I think like just so many people on Facebook in town were really starting to like kind of uh, bring everyone together and bringing everyone up to date on what was happening yeah and it was also coming up to the election year. And um, I guess also, like, I just moved back from Mississauga. Like, I did my little uh, internship at Mercedes. And I was like... You did an internship at Mercedes? Oh, yeah. Mercedes-Benz I'll, Financial I'll try Services. To, I'll try to remember that. Yeah, well, yeah we'll, we'll, we can talk about that in a bit. But, yeah, so I got back from, from Mississauga. And I was like, man, like, I just, I love my town so much. And I just want to do whatever I could to, like, really steer us in the right direction. Right? So I got so involved with just studying every council meeting i got like so analytical with it i was like just <laughs> invested yeah i well i watched like almost every council meeting of this uh past term it was from 2014 all the way to 2018 like just i'd be studying for this studying for that and then in the background i'd have like this council meeting playing oh i thought you were in a corner with the lights off and you were just like taking notes of like every council meeting well i don't know but like i would even like um I don't know. I would just be like studying other things and I just have it playing in the background and still just always kind of, yeah. like, I don't know. I've always find like, if you ever want to become an expert in anything, you just need to overload yourself with the information of that and then start to work with it from there. And yeah. it's, like, even if you were want, like even something practical, like let's say I wanted to become like a plumber, 
I would probably just sit and just like go on YouTube for like, I don't know, five hours even and just look up just like this, that, like the everything else. Like I would start by Googling like what what things do plumbers need to learn or like what prerequisites or what kind of like skill set do you need to like become a plumber? Yeah. And then start looking at like all these kind of like characteristics, all these traits, look at jobs and even see like what kind of um, like things they require. Look yeah. into like, okay, well, what is like, what makes up this certification that they require? What makes up like this program? And just it's crazy with like the resources we have now, how much information you can just gather and just head towards like, it's just, it's insane. Like to think like yeah. even 50 years ago, like, you know, and 50 years ago is not a long time. I mean, like we're talking like the sixties and we weren't, we weren't around back then. Yeah. But other people who, there's a lot of people who were, who are still walking around right now. And like, just to think that like, if you want to become an expert of like becoming an electrician or a plumber, or you want to learn about like quantum physics, or you needed to go to, learn about like economics you needed to learn about you know so many different things yeah. you would have had to go to like different probably like several libraries to get like the right books that you <laughs> need to like i don't know it's just crazy how like you can go onto a website and there's probably like 50 links just attached to it like even if you look at a book's references like even like any kind of book you buy from like uh like pr- most like non-fiction books are just filled with just references of like you know 100 other books and that's yeah. great now you got to go and find a 100 different books Nowadays, when you have a like an ebook or something like that, and they have all the references, you can find like twenty other books just instantly. And it's like that's that's something that's really crazy. You become an expert of so many things just so fast. And that's the thing because I'm like right now I'm just trying to learn like videography and like photography, and like I still I'm still worried about like that overloading of information because I feel like I'm wasting like eighty percent of my time. Like I'm just trying to search. Like I'm watching like a twenty minute tutorial, and that information was like in one or two minutes that I needed right yeah so like aren't you worried about like just completely just wasting your time wouldn't you want it condensed even more I don't know I'm just always trying to find like the shortest the efficiencies yeah Yeah. but I me it's still perspective right because beforehand I had to go like like you said to like elaborate to research stuff when I could just sit in my house and actually do it and you're into mathematics like they say people are like good at math tend to be like really lazy and want to like well it, it, but it, in a good way though like that's literally <laughs> those who seek for the efficiency or those who crave the efficiency yeah so um yeah i know what you mean people stretch those videos out like crazy because they're just like hey like maybe like i can retain them better if i do this or kind of thing or they, I don't know. yeah not only that like there's some kind of satisfaction of like searching like trying to do something it takes you a very long time and actually achieving it versus like finding it in like this Five hundred dollar course, yeah, and then uh, just like watching, <laughs> you know how many times I see that where I see like photography courses where I can learn everything, and the first line would always be, oh, do, you, "Do you like, like you want to avoid binge watching like countless hours of YouTube? Here, I condensed it all into a course for you, kind of thing." And I'll be like, eh, "Do I want to spend that money?" Yeah, it's so dumb. There's just like it, you don't have to like pay it though these days. Like, there's just so many other options. I know. Like, the, have you ever heard of Lynda.com? Yeah. Oh, that's 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 just amazing. That's how I learned Premiere Pro for a bit. Really? So yeah. just that. What's Premiere Pro? It's like uh, it's like an editing software that I use. Okay, that's what you use for like your YouTube videos and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I don't. Funny. Yeah, I don't have a choice. <laughs> that's the thing with this. It's literally just boom live. I know, and that's it's so different because like when I'm doing my videos, do you know how many cuts I have to take in order to get like a specific scene or a shot? Versus live, it's just like, go, 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 go. This is just so much easier. Yeah, I know. Like, I did a podcast with, like, my friend, and it was simply just like this. Just, like, casual conversation. But you actually worked at Mercedes for how long? Uh, it was only, like, four months, actually. It was um, August 2017 till December. That was it? Yeah. Do you plan on going back? Probably not. I was there for, well, I had a contract for a year, but I left after four months. And like, oh, you said. Uh, well... <laughs> I just didn't like the job. Like it just felt too robotic. Like it was just, here's 10 steps of like a lease process. Like the, the, the company was great. The culture was amazing, but like I just applied for the wrong position. Really? And you, yeah. So you weren't even like a sales rep. It was just like you were the behind the scenes kind of guy. Yeah. Finalizing the paperwork. Yeah, I worked at the, like the financial headquarters. So it was just like an office building in Mississauga by the highway. And then you just gave him your two weeks notice in December and said, oh. I gave him a month notice, actually. Really? Oh, yeah, so you yeah. knew a month in advance? Yeah, well, I was like, you know, these people are so nice. They gave me a good job. They were a good company. But, like, again, like, it's just the job was just too simple for me, I guess. And, like, the job that I wanted, like, it wasn't an easy switch to get to. And also, I didn't even, like, pursue to try to switch for another job because I just didn't like Mississauga. Like, 
it was just really? yeah it was just too busy like okay i'm a novel boy i like where it's like more spaced out like ottawa Shoot. ottawa's nice because you can go to the like downtown where it's super busy where you live it's just so much more tame like you're like what still 20 minutes like less than 20 minute drive it's gonna be like Parliament 15 Hill. minutes yeah okay so like fi- like yeah 15 minutes to get to Parliament hill from your house but you are fuck yeah you're right in the middle of like the nicest area like two minutes away from the Rideau Canal. Yeah. You're like, it's pretty much like your backyard. Like if, like from where your house is, like your neighborhood, if you just walked like right in that direction, you could just like cut through properties. Like how far would it be till you're there? Until like uh, to get to the Rideau River? Yeah. 10 minute walk. Cause what's, so what's the name of that waterfall? It's there Hogsback or something. Yeah. It's like, it's like the Hogsback area or whatnot. Yeah. And that is like super close. It's right. Like I'm telling you right now where, where I live, it's like in walking distance of everything. Whether you need to go to like an elementary school for your kids, or like university, or like shopping centers, or just peace and quiet of everything, everything's in walking distance, which is great. I don't have to live in like Manatech or like Barhaven. Yeah, like, Barhaven. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, you're not familiar with any. No, no, I remember this uh, this lady who I worked with, and she was uh, retiring from StatsCan. And uh, <laughs> she was always just so excited because she was like, I bought a house in Barhaven. And I was like, I don't know. It's just a funny name, Barhaven. But like it, she talks about it like every day. So then, like, kind of became a thing that like we knew when we were talking about her. Like when uh, me and uh, my old roommate worked there, <laughs> we were talking about like that lady. We're like, yeah, like I wonder if she's in Barhaven right now. Yeah, she's probably at the Swiss Chalet at Barhaven. She also liked to go to Swiss Chalet. <laughs> she was nice though. Like we never like you know we, we treated her well and she treated us well. How long did she work there? She worked there for like I think forty years. Oh my god! But, yeah. Yeah, okay, f- funny story. So I won't use her name. Or we can make a fake name. Yeah, just... We'll call her, like... Linda. L- yeah, Linda. <laughs> it's in linda.com. <laughs> but yeah, okay, so Linda probably got the job there back when she was, like, late 20s. Um, it was, like, her first job or something? It was, no, one of her, like, a few jobs. I think she worked there when she had, like, her young kids. Like, when she had, like, two kids, and probably, I think they had really good daycare there, too. Like, yeah. the federal government had, like, you know... Daycare at StatsCan? I never saw a daycare. No, they did. They did when we were there. What? Yeah. Where? Oh, there was on the backside. So, like, you know how we used to walk in? Like, um, there was, like, the, the bus loop, and that's where we always went. It was the front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was on the other side, like, on the, the middle building, like, <coughs> between the John Talon and the, uh, oh, what was the name of the other one? The really tall one. And it was, like, the first one that like, closest yeah. to the, to the It was road, named right? after, like, the other stat- statistician. But, um. Yeah, they, they had a daycare there. I don't know why I'm not surprised because, like, it's not like I was actively searching for one, right? Like, I didn't have a kid. But, like, she was there for 40 <laughs> years. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We we're talking about her. It's like, <laughs> yeah, that, like, that daycare. But, um, yeah, so she were and her husband worked there, too. So she was in, like, the statistics side, like, the economist kind of side. And he was, like, in the IT side. It's like, you know, I like, it's funny because there's, like, four categories, I think, of people that work there. There was, like... Yeah. Um, the economics kind of like uh, social kind of like I forget what, I think it was like social sciences kind of people. Yeah. Then there was like the math and statistics people. Then there was like the IT and data kind of people. Yeah. And then there was like the fourth, which is like I, I can't remember right now. I think it was like some other kind of like metadata or like it was some other techie kind of like I think like the infrastructure kind of thing. The fact that you remembered any of them. Man, I remember a lot of stuff from that job. Like. Um, yeah, there was a lot. Like, so, like, the only thing that's annoying, though, is that so much of the software we used there was meant just for StatsCan, and, like, it's not very applicable elsewhere. Like, really powerful software and, like, crazy stuff for, like, the processes that these guys do for, like, their, their statistical analyses is incredible. Like, Isn't that what it's meant for, though? Like, right. well, yeah, but, like, the thing is, the software, like, they, they, I think it was called IBSP, like, um, what was the, I definitely, I still have, have the, all the notes back home, integrated business statistics program is what it was yeah and yeah. it was just like this way of like taking all these different surveys from taking all these like crazy different data sources like, that they have access to and um put it all together and make like they, like it's just crazy how accurate they can be with like looking at such large amounts of numbers like when you're looking at numbers from like an entire province that they have access to and they can take from like you know every single business across the book to estimate things like it's crazy how the kind of accuracy you can get like it, when you're forecasting or like how do you think sales went in that uh, quarter or like how, I don't know, you can look at like specific um, industries. Like how do you think that like tire sales were in this province at this time or like what was the factors? And you can ask questions like, you know, what caused this surge in this pr- price? 
Like it's just crazy the things they could do. Would you go back? Oh, I think I would. I mean, it would be really interesting. I don't know. It's just Ottawa, cold. Really? Yeah. Are you kidding? Devin, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> Got another guest. Might be too shy to come on. We'll see. It's the weather that stops you from coming it's here. Grassy Grinch. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the party. <laughs> it's literally the weather that stops you from being here. Uh, okay, I don't know. That sounds wimpy. And you know, like it's. No, wimpy. I'm not surprised. Are you yeah. kidding me? You know how many people I know that are dying to get out of here? Really? Me and Cl- like six, for me, the perfect job. You like Toronto, six- probably, right? No, it's way too busy. Yeah. I've had like I've done a couple of Toronto trips already, mm-hmm. and I would not go there. Like it's insane. Where's Just what? being downtown alone. Have you ever been to Niagara yet, or no? No. Oh, Niagara, yeah. <clears throat> I was there once. Here's the thing about my friends: like, we have spontaneous trips. Yeah. And it always kills me. Yeah. Because it would be like, oh, you bring my one day off of work, and I'll get a text in the morning. You know, I'll see you in half an hour or something. Yeah, like, it's then, just okay. brutal. And then it's like, okay, pick me up. You're not ready for like whatever they're doing. Exactly. Wow. And the one time I went to Niagara, we planned it the day before. And we were there for like less than 24 hours. I was in Niagara for That's maybe. Horrible. <laughs> oh, my God. It's always a 24-hour trip because someone has to get home. Like the next day. Yeah, yeah when you have more... that many people. Exactly. Especially as someone who has to be one of the drivers. Oh, man. Yeah, that was nice about when we came up here. Like, so six hours. Caleb drove the whole time. So, like, we were all able to, like, sleep on the way. It's so, like, I was up the late, late the night before. I think I went to bed at, like, three. I was just excited, too. Like, I know I'm, like, a little kid before Christmas when it comes to, like, any kind of, like, a trip or events or something. It's so, like, you know, if it's, like, you're going camping or you're going to, like, like, you're flying away the next day to any kind of new trip or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, of just, course. Yeah, you just want to, yeah. It was an escape for you, huh, to come here? Yeah, a little bit, you know, because like, oh, yeah, I'm taking this course right now. Um, so I am graduated, but I'm taking like a post-grad certification in big data analytics. So yeah. at McMaster on Saturdays, but we're between terms right now. Uh, my last class was the first Saturday of April. So I've had yeah. I've had off the last Saturday, this Saturday, next Saturday, the one after that. And then I start back, I think it's around May 11th or May 12th. Like uh, just that one course or is it like part-time or something? May 11th. Uh, it, it, so like I had two courses and I'll start up two new courses because um, it's like a six course, uh, <coughs> six course. Oh, so you're taking it like one step at a time kind of thing. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Like it, they, it's funny. So like a lot of people actually do just one course a term for two years. So six courses over six terms. Um, but I'm just like, no, nah, I want to <laughs> do it in a year. Yeah. Like you may as well do it in a year. It's not, it wasn't that bad. Like it's pretty <laughs> simple. Just the only thing is you have to drive to Hamilton. I don't like driving to Hamilton. How far is that? Um, or like how far is the university? Yeah, from no, from like, yeah, from like where you live. Um, it's probably like because you make it seem like you're dreading it. Well, no, like it's, it's not the, the drive's not bad, it's 50 minutes. It's just Hamilton that like scares me. Like, it's just a lot of pollution in Hamilton. So, oh, seriously? Oh, yeah, like there's that's where um, a lot of the steel producers are. And, uh, <laughs> what? Well, it's just, it's yeah, it's not a good place. Like, have you ever so you see, you went, you went to Niagara. So you must have gone over the skyway. So you must have seen all that pollution. Like when you're going over the skyway, you look to your right, you see all the pollution. So then you quickly look back and roll up the windows. <laughs> well, I was asleep for probably <coughs> half the time because, like, for me, when I drive, like, I need to, like that's when I get like my best rest. Yeah. Surprisingly. Well, I mean, that's why like a lot of parents will drive around with their kids in the back seat <coughs> when they want them to fall asleep. I feel I don't feel guilty at all when I'm at the front. Because no, apparently- you're not driving. Like, yeah. I, I go for nice- <laughs> apparently, it's like protocol where you have to like make sure that the driver is awake at all times. No, I'm just out like a light. Yeah, I know what you mean. Like that's yeah. probably like the the safest thing. Or like the person in the passenger seat has like almost as much responsibility for like keeping everyone safe. I know. But yeah, after the course, what are you gonna do? Um. Well, I don't know. So. And my contract where I'm at right now ends in December and I'll be done school in December. So like, I'm kind of thinking about going and just traveling for a few months. Cause like I, I went to Europe last year and I really enjoyed that. And like, I want to go back to Germany and there's a few other countries I want to explore. Like I've never been to Austria. Yeah. I, I want to kind of go up to like some of the Nordic countries as well. Go yeah. to like Sweden would be cool in Norway. And um, you yeah, know, there's just a lot of places I still want to go check out. Um, Did you go by yourself? No, actually, I went with Caleb, which, who was in the other room. <laughs> so I don't know who came to watch Caleb. <laughs> he's in the building. Um, he's just hiding in the back. 
got nervous and didn't want to show his face for too long. So he's come on. You should have seen me the first time I was on camera. Oh my god. Well, you're so pretty though. You got (laughs) the the looks didn't cut it. Unfortunately, I just had I don't know. It was just so weird looking at myself, hearing my voice, especially. Yeah. Cringing for months. No, it's tough at first. Yeah, you're going through it. You're like, what the heck is this? No, I mean. (laughs) I don't know. I haven't put any hair gel in this weekend. It's been amazing. So sorry for anyone who's like opposed to mop head. You know, <laughs> I got mop head rights. Don't infringe. At least you got something to work with. <laughs> it's a mop. It's the same thing. It's the same thing every morning. That's, the, that's, that's yeah. pretty much it. I've actually been thinking about shaving my head. Really? <laughs> yeah. Like, because the thing is, I never have. And I just want us to see how simple it would be. And like, I feel like my laziness would just allow me to like, get over it and just, it'll be fine. Like, I don't need it. <laughs> Do it as like a dare. Because I remember my friend. Like he has like 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 this long like black hair, and like he only cut it because he had he's like a part of this charity. Okay. And then he was doing like this fundraising, whichever, like he had to basically shave it at the end of the fundraising for like the month, and like he was dreading it. Yeah. <laughs> he, oh, it was probably. something that you would ne- he would never do. But if he ever. wanted to, then it's like awesome. yeah. When he, he realized he had no choice, he was like, you know what, I'll just get it over with. But I haven't seen him yet, so. I've, I've thought about doing a charity uh, podcast where for 24 hours I'm on the podcast. 24 now. hours? Yeah, and that would be the point. Like, what? <laughs> like, like, so I would do it. I would start it at, like, I don't know, midnight that, that day. And I'd be like, okay, like, starting going live. Like, my goal is to just for this entire day. You know, I would probably do something, like, not April 24th, but it would be, like, you know, May 24th. I'll be on for 24 hours. So it'll be like the 24, 24 weekend kind of thing. Yeah. And it would just be me on for 24 hours, and I would just like try to schedule on as many different guests as I could over that period. And like, imagine if I like I could line it up to have one person come every hour. How funny that would be! How are you gonna get someone to come at four in the morning? I'll probably have to do that one on my own for that hour, but that's fine. <laughs> I'll like, I don't know. I'll write no, you probably poems. could. Yeah. If you market it right. Yeah, you're right. Like if I just like get some friends to like agree to like, take shifts with me or something. Exactly. Like, imagine I was like, okay, like you'll come on from like six a.m. to nine a.m. or something before work. <laughs> like I know <laughs> night crawlers that are up like all night, so you definitely know someone. It's just yeah. a matter of like making sure the delivery is right because for the right cause, I'm telling you, you can get anyone together. Like look at the SEF now. Like it's crazy the amount of people that are actually involved. And it was just a matter of just sharing the message of like what the cause is about, right? It's a Somali education fund. Yeah, so it's basically like t- we uh, we didn't obviously handpick, but the president. So her mother trying to make trying to make sure I get the story right. So her mother knows the principal of an elementary of an elementary school in the capital of Somalia, Mogadishu. So she basically hand selected ten kids that had either lost one or both of their parents, and who are not currently in school. And we basically cover like the tuition costs, supplies, uh, food, transportation, and whatever else they need wow. just so they can get through each year. So we try to fundraise every year. So like this year it was about $8,000, $8,000 Canadian. And, and how, they, how many people can that like help? So 10. So it, the and thing that, is- That like changes their life. Like exactly. Because beforehand they were either just set, like helping their family selling like products on the street yeah. or they were just staying at home or and now they can focus on like just bettering themselves exactly and focus on getting ahead because some of them were in school like originally but then their parents couldn't afford it or whatnot yes yeah, so they pulled them out yeah exactly so and that's the thing we're trying to keep them until they graduate high school and that's like the whole point as to why we're just sticking with 10 right now and like maybe branch out other words other ways like maybe trying to start like a club on campus in another school or doing like projects here and there like we're partnering with like three other organizations right now to build a school in uh, in like another country and it's called operation education that's amazing so like they're, they're pretty active like when i when we first started it was just just an idea of us going to like a random classroom at carlton just coming up with it and then now it's like uh it's actually like a nonprofit and stuff, so it's crazy how it is now. That's so crazy though. Like, and you know, kudos to you for doing that. Like, it's crazy out here. You have some people that are like, "Why is school mandatory?" Like, that's so annoying. Like, it should be your right. Like, you know, libertarianism and stuff. It's like, come on. Like, you know, it's like it's okay. Why are we complaining about that when there's people out there who are like wishing so bad? Yeah. Oh my school? god, you should see these kids. Like when we get like video footage of them in class, it's crazy to look at. Like, oh, just like they're probably crying with joy. Probably yeah. just like this is amazing. <laughs> 
and I used to dread it when I was in. Oh, I know. Like I'm not no, even gonna lie. I meant. I think I mentioned in my last pod- podcast. Like, <coughs> I just like I really didn't like elementary school or high school. Like it just. I don't know. I felt like I kind of caught that like me, me, me. I like punk music and like I don't like school. Like, yeah, <laughs> I was yeah because I always thought it's something that I was forced to do. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's about perspective. Like when I traveled back home and realized it. Like I'm telling you, man, you should. I want to. Travel. I wish I went with you. Like your videos there were amazing. Like I was watching them like crazy. Every time you pump one out, I was like, this is so, this is gold. Because I had to keep some, I had to do something, right? But I didn't. So then what was the one thing that I had? A phone and my laptop. Yeah. Plus I never saw footage of the Somaliland. Like it's not even a recognized country. Yeah. When I mentioned to people like Somalia, like if you go on Google Maps, it's not, it doesn't even show the, the separation. That's crazy. It's just, so it, like it's, who, who are the ones like this? The Somalians that say like this is our boundary, this is our land. Yeah, like, exactly. Google doesn't even acknowledge it. <laughs> it's recognized by a few countries. Uh-huh, like some neighboring countries. Yeah, but uh, in like a few other other countries, like I think I don't know, maybe Britain or something. I'm not too sure, but I know a few countries around the world recognize it, and like it has its own government and everything. Everything is like they're running on their own essentially, but it's not fully recognized. Yeah, so like, it's, like, yeah. it's not UN recognized kind of thing. Yeah, and it's kind of strange because, like, we had like the currency that's used is is the US dollar. Yeah, that's what's strange. Like, there's a lot of countries around the world that like they just I guess they don't trust their own system is what it is. They don't have their own Federal Reserve that is like fair. Like, because a lot of times, like, well, okay, the one of the most important things about having like a central uh, bank is that it needs to be at arm's length from the government. Like, it, they can't. It can't be directly controlled because like the thing is that like if you were the prime minister and you had the ability to like print money like oh my god that's <laughs> such a mess like, that's 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 the simplest way to put it like it's just not good like you have to understand your limitations like obviously like a government can spend 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 but like it's not that they're like can just print money and just ruin their currency and like make hyper inflate everything yeah. <laughs> like, you know that's that's the thing, like, you need to have inflation only be at, like, 1% or 2%. Because here's here's the two extremes. The one is, if inflation is way too high, then people are freaking out and they're constantly bargaining, like, I need more money, more money, mm-hmm. more money. Prices start rising. Everyone starts getting really greedy. And then, like, society starts to tear down in that way. Like, there's a lot of protests. Everyone's like, I need a raise real quick because now my groceries are twice as expensive. And, you know, it's just it's when things barrel out like that. And that's what happens when you print a lot of money. Yeah. As you increase the... the the amount of anything, the value of it diminishes. It's the same thing as if you had 10 liters of gas compared to if you owned like 100,000 liters of gas, how would you value gas? If you're like, I never have to worry about fueling up again or shit, I better fuel up soon. You value that in a very different way. You know? yeah. And it's the same thing with money. The more that's printed, the less it's worth. So if the government was like, we can actually build this roadway, but we're just going to like, you know, just print a little bit of money and pay for it here, then we don't have any debt. And they do that over here and they do that over there. And then all of a sudden there's more money in circulation. People don't need to borrow. Like it just it affects the interest rates. It would just, it would be horrible. Like it would uh, be really bad. And I guess that's what happens in a lot of countries when like they don't have their shit together and they are just thinking, oh, we can handle it all. Like, you know, I'm a smart dictator. I'll, I'll figure it out. <laughs> I'm the nicest dictator you got. No one's immune to it, honestly. Yeah. I guess- it's brutal because I have a friend. She's Venezuelan, and what's going on over there is just oh, like, it's horrible with the uh, president Maduro. I don't even know his name. And then there's Guaido, is like the opposition leader that people are trying to recognize as the president. Mm-hmm. He's like the democratic one, but yeah, it's uh, crazy what's happening there. Like we're so lucky that we don't have a war going on in, in like in our country. I mean, okay, there's a lot of like like social wars going on. There's a lot of like stupid stuff online that we've never dealt with, but like. It's kind of funny. I like I, I sense that like war is evolving because we never had this before. We never had just a digital like, war. Yeah, like the amount of stuff that's going on online, people like freaking out at each other. You know, and that's the thing. I'm trying to stay calm, cool, and collected because at the end of the day, like I'm not trying to. When I view something, I'll, I'll just take it as a grain of salt and then just move on. Because yeah. if I just fully invest in it, like a specific article title or whatnot then I'll just like binge, try to figure out what's going on or I'll just get paranoid as to what might happen. Yeah. Like whenever I see like big, like bold, like eye capturing titles. Oh, like, like all those hook titles. Oh my God. So many clickbaiters. Oh, it, it's so cringy. Like even that's why for like my content, you'll never see me like write down 
like where it's just to capture your attention. I'll never, I'll never be like must watch or emotional. Yeah. Or just lie to you. Yeah, like for all my titles, it's been the same thing so far. Just like number six, number six. Yeah, it's just, just this thank is what you. It is. Yeah. This is what it is. Enjoy, watch it or I read it. If if you enjoy it, yeah. then by all means. Uh, I'm I'm gonna put your uh, your YouTube link like your your uh, channel. That's what we call it. I'm gonna put your channel under the description as well. <laughs> it's so like, fun. I really I do love a lot of your stuff, and you're like part of my motivation for why I wanted to get involved in YouTube. I was like, this is awesome. Like, you know, because like me, you and I had some great conversations back in the day. And, yeah, I know right now, like we're probably still rusty. I'm pretty tired and like, you know, it's been a little while. So we're still kind of working through what's yeah. been going on. But, you know, I, I, I wish that you and I were closer so we could do these kind of things more often. But, and you just started off. You're literally on episode seven. Episode seven. Like you should have started this back too. I'm back, baby. Oh, yeah. You, Never here, but I'm yeah. back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I, this is what's really nice too is like, you know, I, for all the other ones I was doing, I always posted like a link like a day ahead. Like, hey, just so you know, this is the time. And like, it's really cool to just be able to set it up as we have now and you know, we still have like you know a handful of people that tune in and like it's just it's really cool that like we're able to do this now yeah. so like i was saying it's a little bit bad that like there's less okay so the good thing is there's less physical wars there's less like boots on the ground people fighting in the world than there was 50 years ago yeah but now we've got like, wars online of people just shitting on each other for no reason like just people like to people that they've never met but like they're just like, hey, they, I don't like this person's hat, or like I don't like this person's whatever. I'm like, offended. I'm offended. <laughs> like we're gonna just have a little freak out about this, and that's gonna be like how I'm gonna like take you down. It's not gonna be a missile. It's gonna be a, a tweet. <laughs> I was literally just listening to a podcast because uh, one of my friends started a podcast. So I was just listening to her first episode. What do you call it? It's called like it's not that serious. Yeah. And they were talking about that Twitter war that people have. And how they would just go after certain content creators like on YouTube. Yeah. Just because they have like this label of like, oh, like they're Somali, they're doing something that's out of the norm. Oh, Let me yeah. just like shut them down. There's kind probably of thing. so much of that crazy. Oh, stuff, yeah. it's just it's so cringy watching like it's so cringing to see. And I've gotten hate on my content too. I'm oh, not gonna lie. Yeah, I'm sorry. But I kinda I'm fucked. No, I can't. <laughs> I, I kind of laugh because I look oh, at yeah, it, it makes like, you stronger. Too, I was right? like, damn, you took the time and effort to actually make a comment, which is increasing my engagement. Yo, let me give you, let me have a conversation with you. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> if you look at it that way, it's like these people are supporting you. <laughs> like, that's <what laughs> they are. Like, like, that's literally it. Like for them to take the time out to be angry and to be pissed and to like formulate the, like a well put together thought and put it on there. It's great. It's like, I don't know. It's funny. What if it's just a whole bunch of Russian bots freaking like just trying to trip you out? That's just like so at the end of the day that I look at the number because me, I, I view content based off of like what the title is. And like I go straight to the comment section. Like I, I have ADHD. Yeah. Oh, yeah, if I a video too. is like 20 minutes, I'm going to start reading the comments just to see what people are talking about. Yeah. And then I might just skip Perspective to that. Perspective too. Yeah, good. exactly. So if you see like 100 comments, I'm like. Clicking on that video, I'm going to stay there for probably, like, a good time. That's awesome. You learn a lot from them, too. I mean, it, okay, it sounds like, obviously, everyone always has that thing where they say, like, oh, it's so dumb to, like, go on to, um, uh, what's it called, uh, to go into the comment section. Like, people there are wasting their time. Let's see. Oh, there's, like, all these little comments here. People are bored, want to attract the most eyes, so they will say things to offend people. Yeah. Oh, that's, cool. oh my that's God. a big thing, too. Why do you think I hate when when I see the word emotional or like you are going to cry or like like do you know what I mean? Just like this clickbaity stuff, like it's just so frustrating. Like even pre that's kind of why I avoided pranks. I told myself this is not something that you're gonna create because it will get to the point where I have to do the most outrageous stuff just to get people's attention. Because for pranks, like I grew up watching that stuff. Yeah, and now it's gotten to a point where like. You like it's just gotten ridiculous. Like yeah. I saw there's this one guy, like his name is Sam Pepper. Before he uh, he like fell off or whatnot, he did like a fake kidnapping prank, oh, and yeah, then that pulled, got him yeah, yeah, he, he held a gun to like some someone's head. That's pretty fucked. And it, it was like ridiculous because he like someone I don't know if it was staged or whatnot, but I was like, why do you have to get to that point just to get like a view? Yeah, you're really selling yourself, and you're really just like scaring people at that point. Like that's yeah. you're scaring people to say, look at me, like fuck that like you may as well just go set a fire on the public like just it's ridiculous what people will do not only that especially if you're doing those social experiments and then you see like someone who's like a particular race have like a certain reaction if, if it has like 10 million views everyone's gonna think oh that's how 
these type of people act right yeah and it's just like ridiculous uh, why do you have to, yeah you have to fuel in that direction make them think yeah. that's the whole picture people don't understand how much of a, an effect they that they really have especially with the content that they push and that's why like when i went to small island i just showed it how it is whether it's good or bad or whatnot yeah. i said Give okay it a clear lens don't yeah. have to like that's the thing too many times it's like only show the things that benefit like your viewpoint and to like or that will push your agenda your agenda yeah it's such a joke don't look at it like it's a and that's just, yeah that's honestly frustrating i'm not triggered by it but like it's just annoying because i see it all the time when the only thing i can do is make sure that my content isn't like that like you can do you you'll never see me you'll never see me watch your stuff but like it's as long as you don't like uh push it on me then uh, We'll be all right. Oh, you're actually searching it up? <laughs> yeah, I'm copying your link. Someone wants a uh, local joker. Wants... There it is. And so there it is in the comment section for anyone watching live. And that's the thing. Like I'll me. put this on after for people. Yeah, yeah my content is kind of like everywhere because at first it was just like an everyday thing because I couldn't, I needed to get comfortable on camera. And I told myself, okay, let me do that 365 day challenge of making one minute videos, like what Nas Daily did. Yeah. And I saw it as something just so I could get better, because I look back at when I first did my when I did my first video. It took me it used to take me weeks just to make one video, which is ridiculous. <laughs> like I think my first video took six months. No way, dude. This I literally press a button and we're live. <laughs> it's Tyler, Sierra says hi. Wave at your cousin. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> that hands there for you, Sierra. <laughs> um. It took me six months to do my first video, and now I can do one in like a day or two if I. Okay, so you've learned a lot, and like I, exactly. I think also you're more confident. And you like at first you second guess yourself so much, like uh, should I do this? Yeah, show? oh. But then uh, that's the thing with this, like I don't know, it was so simple, like, and I don't know, everyone has that complaint, like oh, I'm too busy to do this, too busy to learn that. It's like, a lot. I didn't have to learn much. I just had to learn how to press the button at the top right corner of YouTube, probably like up here on the video. <laughs> And um, yeah, and it just says like, hey, what do you want to use? Like, there's like, this software, that software. Like, you can sign up for this, that, or the other. And I was like, going through all the options, and there's one that's just like, or just use like just live stream, no software or anything. And I was like, yeah, sure. So that's all I do. I just press the button up the top right corner, and just starts recording. And that's the great thing is like simple technology. Like, you could have done this 20 years ago, probably. Like, I mean, oh yeah, a long quality, time ago. Video quality would have been worse. Probably <coughs> going live is more difficult for because like to download stuff live, like I feel like it just think the, the speed of things, like there'd be such a lag or like it just would be a lot. You probably need like to have really fancy computers. Twenty years ago in nineteen ninety nine, yeah. computers were kind of turned over and you know, Y two K happened and all everyone's computers started killing them. So they had that to worry about. They couldn't be live streaming back then. They were yeah. too busy getting ready to kill all humans. <laughs> Not only that, people think that podcasting is easy. You have to be on for however long that uh, you're doing the content, right? Especially you when you're doing a lot. Oh, this is easy. I just, I talk like this, this all is... the time. <laughs> I'm just hanging out with my buddies. That's really it. Like, I guess if I had someone on that I really didn't like, and like the, the thing is I've liked everyone I've had on so far. So it's really easy. Like I could just talk to you about whatever topic all day. Like, you know, I, I can get to the point where I'll ask you like, so like you doing groceries later, like you get <laughs> bacon or like you, you off that, like you on a diet, like, those kind of things, like, you know, I probably don't want to have to share with everyone. You probably don't want me to share what kind of diet you're having right now. Or do you? No, like, you can talk you about... You eating tomatoes lately? <laughs> me? I've been just trying to eat anything to help my digestive system. There That's you, pretty much it. There you have it. Anything for the digestive system. <laughs> 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 so we have a wire right now between the laptop and the, uh, the microphone. So we've probably had about, like, 45 people <laughs> between here and there, uh, just under the table. So if you ever hear like someone just kind of filtering through, that's just because uh, we're actually live in the middle of the street right now. This is just a big wall we set up and uh, there's people jogging through. Hello, sir. <laughs> no, we're actually just in the kitchen. It's a pretty nice kitchen. It's uh, so, but. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but you only have this Airbnb for what, another day? Another night. And then uh, coming back to the old Niagara Sunday, I think we got kicked out of here at 11. If the if the landlord's watching, I don't know how you would be, but oh yeah, the host. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thanks for letting us use this. Like, there was nothing in the policy that said no podcasting. I think if I uh, if I get a my only Airbnb, in America, <coughs> I'll put yeah. a little thing on there. Like, if podcast, make sure shout out to like Airbnb host. Yeah. Like, like, this is my link to link to this place. <laughs> I should do that actually. I, yeah, you know what? 
I'm, for those live, I'm sorry because I'm lazy, but I'll look up the link for this place and I'll put that as like, you know, if you want to like, that's actually funny location. Okay, I'm going to add this on <laughs> right now. I'll just find it on. Uh, yeah, it's free advertisement for them, right? Yeah, Airbnb. I'm not even Airbnb. surprised if they Airbnb. would be watching right now because my cousin, he came uh, he came here and then he like uh, got an Airbnb and it said no smoking in the, in the description. And then he was just on the front porch and then the landlord came like, I, I don't know, maybe like an hour later saying, oh, I saw you on the camera. Get up, pack up, pack up your stuff. Wow. <laughs> I started I started laughing. He got his money back, obviously. But the fact that someone was just like like uh, monitoring the house. Well, I'm not surprised. Like, it's where they live. I don't know if uh, this host, like, even lives here. No, he, no, probably not. It's just something that they rent out. Yeah, here, I'm trying to see if I can just... Uh, Shalem's back. Shalem's back. <laughs> Love, love. Have a little break there. <coughs> okay, I'll let it go get some fresh air. Fresh air out in the green. Fresh air. I'm yeah. trying to find the link right Sierra, now. For this place. Right now? Oh, we got a lot of people on this side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Six, 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 six. On your, uh, laptop. No, no, that's the screen's broken. Mm. So I just use this as a webcam. Uh, it was someone known as tomato sauce. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the balls. A little bit of schmear <laughs> on there. But yeah, I'm trying to find the link for this Airbnb because I want to share it. You want to share it? Yeah. Like, Tell everyone that Genevieve's a great host. A great place. You yeah, guys saw her or no? No. You have no idea what she No idea. Well, we know she, we she know got a little picture. Like. She got a little picture with her dog. Yeah, she, her and her dog are beautiful. Yeah. <coughs> great dog. Great, great people. Great dog. We've oh, never oh, seen. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Chris joining in here. Hello. Chris Delray. Yeah. yeah. Chris shared this on his Insta, and so he's got a yeah. shout out to all the <laughs> people. Like, at, least here, at least be in there for a little bit. Yeah. Right now, yeah. Yeah. Your head in there, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, what some other questions because I have an Arab Muslim fan in there, hilarious, but I see how it contradicts it. Yeah, that's probably the biggest thing for me because I have to make sure, like, because I'm like, I uh, have an online presence, I have to make sure that doesn't like uh, embarrass like my family, like, my mom's hardcore muscle yeah like, so this is something like it's like her number one in her life that's something like i grew up on like throughout like since i was a young kid so anything and like for our community like we're the most ruthless i'm not even gonna lie especially towards ourselves like it's not something that you can just hide if you're within our community you would know that it's like like it's the worst especially when it comes to like an online presence whatever you do that's outside like the religion, like people will come at you for it, whether it's yeah. privately, publicly. And I just, like I said, I just listened to a podcast and these two YouTube, Somali YouTubers were getting bashed because oh, of their horrible. vacation on yeah. uh, Miami. They were just having some fun. And then they, someone Snapchatted it. And then on Twitter, someone posted it, reposted it. And then it just went off from there. Yeah, that's so really like, tough. You have to make sure as to what you say, what you do. And like me- be very respectful all the time. Exactly. Wow. Because you're not only representing yourself and your family, but you're representing the religion as well. And like me, I kind of, I try, like, I don't, like, I don't really like that kind of thing. Like, you do whatever you want. Like, the, the title, you're not, you're not just one thing. You know what I mean? Like, when people ask you, like, where are you from? I'll say, I'm, like, I'm from Somalia and I'm from Canada. I don't say yeah. I'm either. Yeah, you've got time to tell both. Like, you know, it's like, uh, I don't know, like, when, you, when people ask where you're from, where do you say? Canada. Do you ever like say like, "Hey, my but my grandpa was born, my great grandpa." No, no. Usually, I just identify if I was born here, right? You ever so. say like, "I was I'm an Ontario." <laughs> no, no, it's never. No, not really. Well, not what do you say? Here. Oh, I definitely tell people I'm Welsh and Irish for sure. Oh yeah, like my my grandparents. <laughs> yeah, they yep. were born here. They yep. were born on some other rock, yep. <laughs> some other dirt, Across the pond. some European <laughs> dirt. <laughs> but I'm curious to know who is local Joker. Do you know? Oh, is that their Instagram? message is held for review yeah ah come on for, like links yeah if a local joker can actually post a link of their friend i'm just yeah, curious links. i follow that page yeah okay so i can't watch it because i don't I, yeah i haven't figured out well we can check it for those who are on can check that on their instagram i'm sure it could open it. yeah that 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 uh that page just like reposts different like content from people i don't think i've ever been on that but uh for me it's pretty fun all right, I put that up there for anyone who wants to check it out it's in the comments, uh, live comments. Some of it is somewhat like like you're gonna have to understand Somali to know what the 
what uh, they're talking about, but still, like, uh, I think it's pretty funny. Man, I need to get a, I don't know, I need hair gel at home or something. <laughs> For those who are watching, we usually like to see my hair held back. Sorry, this is uh, this is not a normal day. This is not a normal place. I don't even know where I am. <laughs> who are you people? <laughs> I'm surprised you woke up that early. <laughs> no, I went to bed that early. It was like 11 o'clock. We are all sitting there, and I said, I need to go to sleep now. And everyone else was uh, still, you know, running around, just uh, throwing Frisbees and having parties and orchestras and I brought the choir in and I was asleep. <laughs> they had, they brought a bowl in, they, they, they set the place up like a China shop and then they brought a bowl. In. <laughs> That's the thing. When I was in Toronto, I, I tried to sleep as little. As oh, no way. It's Joel. Joel Minaki. That's wow. awesome. Hey, what's going on, Joel? Hey, Joel. Joel hey, for a uh, student president, right? That would have been great. Oh, you know, they, get... yeah, yeah. I went to, I went to high school. <coughs> Joel, if you ever want to hang out, man, just let me know any any time. But um, yeah, honestly, I wanted to, like oh, okay, I'm, gonna, I'm coming back to Ottawa soon because we gotta do another one of these episodes. Maybe like <laughs> maybe like episode twenty. Yeah, come back. We'll yeah, you're coming back that soon. <laughs> well, we'll see how many I pump out. Because <laughs> you've already posted seven in what? How many weeks? Uh, been two? two weeks, two and a half. Yeah, seven episodes in two weeks. Yeah. I mean, that would have been two episodes for my content. <laughs> yeah, man, this is uh. Yeah. Well, tell tell the people what you need to share. Sorry, I'm like just, I guess I'm burnt out. No, don't worry. It's already been what? An hour and 10. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I prepped myself to for like a Joe Rogan podcast right now. Yeah, no, we got to like, work later and we got to go. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, the th- that's the thing about my job. Like, like uh, I can always go the next day kind of thing. Okay. But yeah, obviously I have work. Where, where are you again? You're a milkman? You no, I, I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm an assignment coordinator at, uh, at Pyramid. So. Grandma Smith can get her 2% tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you're at least here. But yeah, if anybody wants to see my content, uh, it's my name, Percy Osman, on YouTube, or you could just do uh, type in like my nickname, Persh. Uh, don't ask why. I'm called. That we'll we'll do that on the next podcast. Yeah, two yeah, hour special on why Persh, <laughs> how Persh, two where Persh, how Persh. Two hour special in literally like a minute explanation. Oh yeah. <laughs> so yeah, today is uh, Easter Saturday in Ottawa on um, the twentieth of April. We're gonna go see what's going on at Parliament Hill later today. See uh, if Justin Justin Trudeau comes out to address the uh, the protests and parades that are uh, bound to happen today. And um, really. Oh, probably. Well, it's the first. It's first four twenty. It's legal and first legal one. Yep. If anything, and I don't think people would care. No, I feel like. Well, here's the thing. It's it's legal, so I don't know if it's like if a bunch of people went and drank beer on the lawn. Like, do you? Th- I, I don't know. We'll, we're gonna see what. Yeah, happens. yeah, we'll see what. Happens. I'm gonna take some pictures. See if Trudeau comes out. He likes to go to any kind of event to go celebrate. But uh, yeah, signing off. <laughs> well, this has uh, been a blast. Goodbye. Bye. Bye <laughs> see you later, guys. We're going to end this stream. Thanks for coming. Subscribe, like, comment, share, uh, tweet. Uh, send it <laughs> send by pigeon. Uh, yeah, Tinder by pigeon. pigeon whatever. Send it, send it, send it, send it, uh, put it in the local newspaper. Yeah. Send it off to the laser beam. And-